Hey everybody, it's Ben and Beta, and today we're starting our overlanding trip at the airport? Yeah. I'm here at the Colorado Springs Airport because I am flying to Minneapolis, Minnesota, where Brian will be picking me up in his Jeep, and we'll be driving straight back to Colorado Springs. So in less than 24 hours, in probably less than 18 hours, actually, I'll have gone from Colorado Springs to Minneapolis and back. Ryan has really been a great friend in the past and helped us move across country a couple times. And we really appreciated that. He asked if I would come and make the trip out with him. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm starting today in Colorado Springs Airport, heading to Denver, then to Minneapolis, and then we'll continue to detail our trip back to Colorado Springs for this overlanding trip that we have this week. We have a lot more in store as well because Brian's got some parts at my house that we need to put on his Jeep, and we have a couple other projects that we need to do as well. But uh, yeah, starting the day here at the airport. All right, landed in Minneapolis. So there it is, Minneapolis. I thought it was gonna be raining. I thought there was gonna be arcs, but it's actually a bit sunny right now. I think it's gonna rain again later today, and I really feel bad for everybody here. that we get way too much rain. So hopefully that ends for them soon. But uh, Brian should be here in about an hour and then we'll be on our way back to Colorado Springs. Then lots of work to do from there before we head on a trip on a Wednesday. But I'm super excited and I know Brian is too. So hopefully the trip back is nice and smooth and easy. But uh, I'm gonna go get some lunch. All right, we're on the road heading back to Colorado Springs. But unfortunately there has been some kind of an accident and hopefully everybody's okay and although it looks like the accident is over there so that guy just flipped over into the ditch or something i don't know what's going on there. he definitely oh there's a couple of cars yeah it doesn't look good boogity 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 let's go racing that's what dad would say yeah yep <laughs> from his nascar days when he watched nascar didn't participate when he watched no but anyway that's what we're doing and uh we'll do some updates along the way uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of gas mileage we get. Driving uh, driving at like 55 miles an hour most highways, I was getting 15.7. And now we've been doing 65, 70 this whole time. And by this whole time, I mean one hour. I'm down to 15.2. So pretty terrific gas mileage here in the Jeep. <laughs> With the extra big tires and uh, tent on top and two guys and all Brian's stuff. All of my stuff. Um, I flew in with this bag. That's what I have. Anyway, we'll update you a little bit later on the trip. I'm curious to see what this looks like. Yeah. <laughs> we're not even off road yet. No. Kind of looks like we are though. I have no idea how well this is going to turn up. It's a little bit bumpy, but we are in Iowa. We just crossed over into Iowa, one state down. I don't remember how many to go four more to go. So we yeah, got we got to get through Iowa. We got to get through Nebraska, and then Colorado kind of four. So it's four total states. So three to go. Keep in mind, I started in Wisconsin. Five for him, four for me. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how well this video turns out because it's a uh, it's a little shaky in here. It's just not just when you hit 70 miles an hour. Yeah. So anyway, update. In Iowa, one state down. 12 hours and 22 minutes to go according to Google. 880 miles to go. All right, so shaky. It is very shaky. <laughs> but we are now 102 miles to our next turn, but we're on Highway 80. We are under 10 hours. We've made some pretty good progress. Only 706 more miles to go, so we're gonna be under 700 miles shortly as well. And uh, every once in a while, it's not so shaky, but it is very shaky at the moment. I don't know, Brian, what do you gotta say? Well, I mean, people spend good money for massage chairs and I get it for free this whole trip. That's true. Well, not for free, the cast is... We're down to about 13.8 miles per gallon in this sucker. But we are heading directly into the wind, so that's going to definitely affect that. But we're getting 18 down this hill right now. But yeah, I mean, it's so far. Actually, the Jeep is more comfortable than I thought it was going to be seat-wise. It's not so bad. Oh, really? A little bit. Listen to you. But it, these are the leather seats, so the one I drove, the one I test drove had cross seats in it. Oh, no, no. You go leather all the time. But we'll update you when we hit the next state, which is going to be... 
great state of Nebraska. Hi Tim. Alright, we have made it to Nebraska. Crossing the bridge right now, but now it's just, I don't know, 800 miles of Nebraska. Or no, 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 613. Yeah, that's not all Nebraska, but it kind of feels like it. Well, the good news is we've got, you know, wind barriers on the left and right, so I'm getting much better gas mileage now. Yeah, 12.7. <laughs> 12.8, 12.8. 12.8, yeah. It's, it's climbing great. back up. 600 miles to go, uh, less than nine hours, eight and a half hours to go, still around 2 a.m. at this point. Still on Interstate 80. We're gonna be on 80 for a while. That's the update. We'll check back in when we get to Colorado or maybe halfway through Nebraska just because. We did make it back to Colorado Springs late last night, about 2.30 in the morning, and uh, you know, all was well. We ended up at 12.5 miles per gallon total for his entire trip from when he left home, 12.6 for when I was in the vehicle. Now uh, we're doing some errands, and uh, we'll see where we go from there, but we made it. All right, let's do this. Let's do it. Today, I have something very different on the channel. In my garage, there's a Jeep. It's a four door and there's a Brian. There is a Brian. And today we're gonna to be installing rock rails on his Jeep. So we're gonna be putting those on. It should be pretty cool. Uh, that's one of the things we need to do before we get out on our trip and adventure. So that's what we're doing. Misty's having a good time with Ru. Supervisor Misty. But uh, we'll take a little bit of video of this and then um, I might do one other modification to my truck before we leave as well. All right, let's get started. All right. Ryan didn't realize they actually had rock rails on his Jeep already, but he wanted ones with a step, so that's what we're putting on. We have to take these off in order to put the other ones on. Not a big deal, but we're taking those off first, and that's what we're working on. Right, Rue? Are you gonna help? All right, we got the first rock rail off. Now it's time to put the rock rails with the step on, which shouldn't be too bad. Um, we had a little bit of trouble with a couple of the bolts, but they came off actually pretty easy. So it's an issue with rust. Yep, rusty. <laughs> so it's all done. Rock rail on on the driver's side. Brian is able to stand on it, so that's good news. I did one more small modification and that was I took off the mud flaps from Tacoma, but that took about two minutes to take those off. So nice and easy. And now it's ready for the trip. All right, so we finished up the work on the Jeep. Uh, Brian's gonna be pulling out here in a second. Tomorrow we're gonna go and test all of Brian's gear up in the mountains, just kind of unpack everything, make sure everything, everything works, that kind of stuff. And here's the new rock rail side steps. Pretty sweet. Look at this guy here. Hey -o. How we doing, peoples? All right, so now that we've gotten everything kind of taken care of on Brian's vehicle and he's been set up, we are uh, now going to be heading up to do a little test of his setup, take a little drone footage, kind of have some fun basically today and uh, see how that goes. But we're heading up. I'm taking my vehicle and Brian is in his Jeep. And we're just going to do a little drive and up in Woodland Park, set up the camper and everything and give it a try. So it should be kind of fun. There is Brian's Jeep. Misty's riding along there. I've got little Miss Rue back here. Right, Rue? Yeah. All right, here we are testing things out on Rampart Range Road. Kind of a nice little test bed. Up to Woodland Park we go. Okay, I'm still to the center of the, the lane. Brian's like, as long as no other vehicles come right? we're yeah. okay. More views, more shelf. <laughs> All right, this is gonna be the first time that we're gonna use Thor's lightning 
on sugar bear and sugar bear that's right sugar bear all right so we're gonna give this a try and see how long it takes to get from whatever it is down to about 20 pounds 20 psi 20 psi is the goal that's what we're gonna try for all right all right here we go come on over showing 38 what was it showing in there that's what it was showing for the three tires where the pressure 38 sensor worked yeah perfect all right so we're gonna go down to 20. That's pretty good. Look at that. Okay. Look so at that. Now we let it sit for just a little bit so that it can um, there we go. even out between the tires. Even out between the tires. So we just let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute. Going up a little bit now. And 20. So that took uh, two minutes, three, two and a half, three, three minutes. Max, About three right? minutes. Now I just got to do the Tacoma. Ryan's gonna operate it this time. We'll see if anybody can just pick it up after just a little bit of instruction. First time using Thor's Lightning. All right, I picked it up. So my tires are saying 34.5, but uh, let's go. And what do you want it down to? Uh, we'll probably go down to around 21, 22, I think. Okay. okay. 21.6. That's probably good, because mine's usually about two pounds over. We'll stop 22. Yeah, we'll stop right there. Let her let her rest and get her done. So we had two vehicles. Probably took a total of 10 minutes max, uh, and I still got to put it away, obviously. But that won't take very long either. But I didn't even take 10 minutes. Um, yeah, no, probably like seven minutes. This so was just a test. Um, this is kind of where we're at right now on Rampart Range Road, doing our off-road test for the Sugar Bear Jeep. And, because uh, I broke the one rule I told everyone when we were doing the podcast videos, and that was to take yourself someplace close by, at least overnight once, to make sure the equipment you have is the equipment you need. Yes. Life got away from me. I didn't get a chance to do that. So we're doing that now. Because when we're at the flat tops, there's not a, like a store nearby. <laughs> there's no 7-Eleven? No. no. Walmart? So we just want to make sure everything's good and we're working well for them. But, uh, yep. Gonna pack this up and head on up into Woodland Park, find a campsite, it's everything up, and uh, have some fun. Hey, look at that. Rue's having fun. She likes to come along. All right, so Brian set up his camper. Uh, I thought I recorded it, but didn't, but it is done and I'm inside it. And uh, yeah, this is kind of what it looks like here from the inside. There's a nice big window over here, which gives you quite a bit of breeze. Like this is nice. It's like uh, you're going to want that open a lot all the time, probably. And the nice thing is it, like it's, it's got the outside layer, it's got the vinyl layer, and then it's got the screen as well. So you've got options there. It's got a nice little uh, rooftop windows here. Right above the rooftop windows, if you look, there's also a spot where you can uh, create venting. Oh, yeah. So you, can un you should be able to unzip that. And then right above there, there's a little uh, thing you can set up. Oh, I see. Yeah. Gotcha. Makes sense. So that allows for some airflow. Do you want to see what the uh, mattress is like inside here? If you sleep on your side, you're going to hurt. Intrepid Geo 2.5. The big thing here is this hinge that they have. They make it a little bit higher. You got lots of windows, lots of ventilation. It's only seven inches thick when it's on top of the vehicle. Uh, Geo 2.5, yeah. So pretty cool tent. I'm six foot tall. When I'm laying in it, I've got plenty of room. When I'm sitting in it, I've got plenty of headroom. And you can kind of see what that all looks like there. Nice big windows. But uh, first setup, and now we're just going to try to throw in the mattress and just see what that's like and see if he likes it better or worse. All right, Brian's just finishing up uh, his test. Everything went really well. He's going to keep the uh, one mattress in, maybe put both of them at the same time because there might be room. So I think everything went good there. And uh, yeah, we're going to pack up before some storms hit this afternoon. But Misty and Rue having a great time. All right, last thing, air up. And then we're going to head out. Got some relaxation going on. And with that, trip preparation was complete. Brian's vehicle was ready to go, and so was mine. It was important that we took the time to do this so we knew that we had everything we needed. 
And the next step now was just to pick up the last minute supplies, those types of things before we headed off on our trip to the flat tops in just a couple of days time. So in part two, you're going to see what actually happened in our flat tops trip. It was amazing, but it wasn't without some drama as well. There were both some victories and some defeats. So stay tuned for that next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, live your life in beta and we'll see you next time.